and, and I like to start off with the bench every time. So we're going to do that, okay? Week three, start bench. We're going to start with the benches. And, number, and the first player on the list, Gardner Minshew. East Carolina quarterback. Thomas Sirk's questionable. Looks like he may not play. They're playing at home. They're playing against Virginia Tech. And you know what? ECU is allowing 45 points per game. And I don't think that average is going to drop much at all playing against Virginia Tech. Now, that's good news if you have um, you know, a wide receiver like Jimmy Williams. And it would normally be good news if you have quarterbacks like Gardner Minshew. But you know he's going to be throwing it a lot. The problem is, is Gardner Minshew is not even completing 50% of his passes. And so there's a chance that Gardner Minshew may not even make it through the whole game. I, I tell you, I'm not worried about Jimmy Williams and Devin Grayson and some of the receivers, but I am worried about Gardner Minshew. I'm worried whether or not they can even score enough points against Virginia Tech. And I've got him as a week three bench playing at home against Virginia Tech. Running back position, let's go there. I've got Alex Barnes, Kansas State, playing at Vanderbilt. You know, the Commodores have only allowed 108 yards so far this season, rushing. Okay, but they did play a bad opponent. Um, But they haven't been tested like they'll be tested against Kansas State this week on Saturday. And, you know, the problem isn't exactly, it's not solely the Vanderbilt defense that's the problem for me. The problem for me with starting Alex Barnes is that Kansas State likes to share the wealth on offense. And so last week, five running, five players scored a rushing touchdown for Kansas State. Now, I don't see Kansas State scoring five touchdowns this week against Vanderbilt. I think that's going to be a very defensive battle. I think if you get five or six total touchdowns in this matchup, that'll be a lot. And the question is, does Barnes get one of those touchdowns? And you just don't know. And so I think he's one of those guys where, you know, I, I, 100 yards could possibly be there. It may or may not, but a touchdown may be there, and it may be not. I don't think it's a safe play. I think you're better off looking at depth on your roster and going in another spot this week as Kansas State visits Vanderbilt. I've got Alex Barnes as a sit. Uh, I just don't have a lot of confidence in that play. John Lovett, running back Baylor, right? We know he's the number one ba- number one running back. He's playing at Duke this week. Now, to say that Baylor is struggling would be an understatement, right? I mean, they're 0-2. Um, they lost to UTSA last week, 17-10. In that game, Lovett only ran for 72 yards. And this week, they traveled to Duke to face a Blue Devils defense that only gave up 22 rushing yards to Justin Jackson and the Northwestern offense last week. I think you've got to take that into consideration. Not a safe play. Leave John Levitt on your bench this week. Baylor at Duke. Mike Weber running back Ohio State playing Army this week. Now, if you have Mike Weber, you've already been strung out for two weeks. And the question is, is do you have the patience to get strung out for a third week if you have him on your roster still? You know Ohio State's going to physically dominate Army. We know that. And we know that Weber's going to get carries, but just how many is he going to get? Now, keep this in mind. Here's a stat for you about Mike Weber. Last year, he was the Buckeyes' number one running back. He had fewer than 15 carries in eight of Ohio State's 13 games. Fewer than 15 in eight of Ohio State's 13 games. He's not even the number one running back anymore. He's going to split carries at best, most likely, this week with J.K. Dobbins. And I say at best. So that means maybe Weber's looking at 8, 10 carries. It's not enough for me. I have to see more from Weber. I don't even have him on my roster. I, 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 I think he's a bench Um, and and I'm curious to see how this whole running back situation shakes out, but it looks like it's going to be Dobbins, but... Don't count Weber out yet. Don't count him out yet, but I don't think he's a week three start. Go to wide receiver, Demetrius Robertson, wide receiver, Cal. Now, this is a very odd bench. I know it is, but I'm telling you right now, the reason why it's odd is because Ole Miss has given up 27 points. They gave up 27 points to South Alabama in week one, 23 points to UT Martin in week two. But the hole on the Ole Miss offense, on the Ole, in the Ole Miss defense, doesn't seem to be in the front, in the back end. It seems to be in the front seven. They've given up 194 plus on the ground through two games. They're only giving up 159 in the air through two games. And when you compound that, so so I was saying Patrick Laird earlier in the rankings, I was going to come back to him full circle. This is it right here. I like him this week because Ole Miss has given up a lot of rushing yards. I think that running defense could can be had. Um, but I don't know about the passing defense, and we'll see. But I think what's even more concerning, if you have Demetrius Robertson, 
is that through two games that Cal has played, and they've played two really close games where they've needed Demetrius Robertson, he has a total of nine touches on offense. Nine touches on offense against Weber State and North Carolina in games in which they needed him. The Bears are 2-0, and so there's not going to be any grumbling going on right now. But if I'm a fantasy owner, I don't like what I'm getting out of Demetrius Robertson. And I'm telling you right now, this could be, for many weeks, a tipping point for owners for Demetrius Robertson. I don't have the confidence in him right now. I think he's a week two bench, and I hope I jinx you guys, and he goes off this week. And the last guy on, this, on the bench piece, Jarrett Stidham. Quarterback Auburn versus Mercer. You know, if there's if there's one quarterback I've been questioning where a lot of preseason emails were coming in, it was Jarrett Stidham. And I've been saying it all along. The strength in the Auburn offense is in the running backs. It's not in the receivers. So the question is, who is Stidham going to throw to? Who is proven? And I think we had our answers, our questions answered last week when Auburn went to Clemson and couldn't muster any offense. So... You know, we've pointed that out a number of times. You have to realize this. He passed for 79 yards against Clemson last week and was sacked 11 times. Why would they want to keep putting him in harm's way? They're facing a Mercer defense, right? So his, you know, this is what, here's my take on this. Maybe they pass a little bit more. Maybe they build their confidence. Maybe they build Stidham's confidence. They need to build the confidence in the passing game, but they can't abandon the running game. That's what their strength is. So I can see Stidham doing okay. I can see him putting up top 35, 40 numbers, but I don't see him taking the roof off of that off of that defense. I don't see them completely abandoning the run at the expense of just trying to get Stidham jump started. I think there has to be a happy medium. They need to find they need to find that right mix. I think Stidham will be okay, but for me, until I see it on the field, I'm not confident starting him. I'm sitting him week three at home against Mercer. So now we'll get into the starts, guys, and we're going to go ahead and mention, uh, let's say, I want to start off with Mike White, quarterback Western Michigan, playing at home against Louisiana Tech. You know, many fantasy owners were looking, they, they were looking to disown White this past week after they struggled at, at Illinois over, over the last weekend, but, you know, White has a chance to get the offense back on track this week. Louisiana Tech comes to town, and so far after two weeks, the Bulldogs have given up over 420 yards per game. So I think that's a good recipe to get Mike White in your offense. Look for that passing game to get on track. And, and, and Western Kentucky's trying to get that running game going, but that's struggling right now. So most of these yards may come in the passing game. I think you get Mike White in there. Daniel Parr, quarterback, Florida Atlantic versus Bethune-Cookman. You know, Parr was so-so in the season opener against Navy, struggled in week two at Wisconsin, as you can expect. But the schedule starts to open up, and I mentioned that earlier in the show. The schedule starts opening up for the Owls, and the offense should be considerably better this week against Bethune-Cookman. Now, Bethune-Cookman won't be a pushover. I think they'll test Florida Atlantic, but for fantasy owners, that's a great thing because that means four quarters of Daniel Parr. I do think Devin Singletary gets his, but I do like Parr this week, and I think if you need a quarterback in a two-quarterback league, full FBS format, you've got to give Daniel Parr a shot this week. And then all of a sudden, let's go down to Oshamar Abercrombie, running back, Coastal Carolina at UAB. And I like, who, who, who? Oshamar Abercrombie, remember his name. I think he's going to be Coastal Carolina's leading rusher this year. As they get in the, I was disappointed. I didn't get him off the waiver wire after week one. I didn't draft him. Someone beat me to him, and I wish I had him. He rolled up 142, 149 yards and two touchdowns in the season opener against UMass. And after a bye week, the Chanticleers now go to UAB. And UAB at home last week gave up 51 points to Ball State. I think Oshamar Abercrombie is a really sneaky wild card play at running back this week in week three. Let's go to John Kelly, running back, Tennessee. I think he's a start this week, guys, even against the Florida defense on the road. You know, in the Vols' first two games, Kelly has carried the ball at least 18 times and recorded five receptions in both games. Now, Tennessee's going to need him more if they're going to leave the swamp with a victory this week. And, you know, the Gators did give up over 200 yards on the ground in the season opener against Michigan. Is the Florida defense better than that? Yes. 
but their offense is where they struggle. And if Florida's offense can't keep the defense off the field, then they're going to be in the same predicament in week three as they were in week one. So you can bet that that Florida defense is going to get a heavy dose of John Kelly, not only on the ground, but out of the backfield. And I think Kelly's going to get enough touches and find the end zone to get him in your line. I think I think you get him in your lineup week three, John Kelly running back, Tennessee. Let's go to wide receiver, Michael Gallup. Wide receiver, Colorado State at Alabama. And I know, here we go, another player playing. You, Joe, you're starting him at Alabama. I saw what Keyshawn Johnson did last week. He had eight catches. And I said this in week one when I suggested sitting Cam Akers and, and, um, and, and, and Jaquez Patrick. I don't like starting running backs against Alabama. If you're going to start anything against Alabama, it's always a wide receiver. And the way that Gallup gets fed the ball, I think he's going to get enough touches. Now, he, you know, he's one of those guys that gets enough touches that I think he's going to be okay going against Alabama's defense. Now, don't expect 150 yards and three touchdowns against Alabama. But, like I said, you have to have some security. And this is a confidence play. And that's why Gallup's in the starting lineup. If you're okay with 8 to 10 catches, if you're okay with 10 catches, 100 yards, and a touchdown being your ceiling for Michael Gallup this week, then I think you get him into your lineup. He's not going to score three touchdowns if he does great, but I think his ceiling is about 10, 101. If you can live with that, get him in your lineup. And the last player, I think this is the biggest wild card for the week. I love this guy. I love the matchup. I love everything about him this week. Tyler Huntley, quarterback Utah. I love him so much that I picked him up off the waiver wire. He's going to be in my lineup this week. Huntley is our week three wild card. He's our week three wild card play at home against San, San Jose State. You know, in the first two games of 2017, Huntley has attempted at least 32 passes, but in both games, at least 32 passes. He's completed at least 23 of them. He's rushed for at least 70 yards and a touchdown in both games this year. They play San Jose State this week, who's played three games so far, two of them against FBS opponents, South Florida and Texas. And the Spartans' defense has given up a total. Listen to this, guys. They've given up a total of 98 points and 1,170 yards of offense. That's enough for me. That's a recipe for success. That's a recipe to pick up Tyler Huntley, get him in your week three lineup, team him up in the two quarterback leagues with somebody like Lamar Jackson. You're going to be okay. Tyler Huntley, week three start for Utah at home against San Jose State. So that takes us through it, guys. I touched on the beginning. I touched on the player rankings. I touched on start bench. I'm, I, look, we could say I could sit here for another two hours and talk, but I can't. I just don't have the time to do that. I'm looking forward to talking to you guys again next week. Be on the lookout for the email Monday, Sunday evening or Monday. Good luck to you guys once again. This is Joe signing off with the College Fantasy Football site, the voice of the College Fantasy Football site, your most trusted resource for College Fantasy Football. Guys, enjoy the games. Enjoy the weekend. I'll talk to you next week.